There are many challenges when treating patients with resistant hypertension and atrial fibrillation. Resistant hypertension means that the patient has not responded to several antihypertensive medications, and that increases their long-term risks, including atrial fibrillation, the risk of stroke, and other morbid events. In addition, it becomes much more difficult to have the patient respond to antiarrhythmic therapies that we may decide are appropriate for the patient. The rationale for performing the Eradicate AF study was as follows. Hypertension is extremely common in patients with atrial fibrillation referred for ablation. In fact, it's the most common comorbidity. In addition, hypertension is a risk factor for atrial fibrillation recurrence even after catheter ablation is successful. We previously performed a pilot study using renal artery denervation in addition to the standard approach for catheter ablation, which is called pulmonary vein isolation. We chose to use renal artery denervation because, number one, it can potentially effectively treat hypertension, and number two, because it reduces uh, central sympathetic output, which stimulates the heart and can potentially contribute to the development and maintenance of atrial fibrillation. Our prior pilot study suggested that by performing renal artery denervation, we could markedly increase the success of the ablation procedure. The key findings of Eradicate AF were as follows. We enrolled more than 300 patients and randomized them to receive either standard ablation or pulmonary vein isolation or standard ablation plus renal artery denervation. First, the patients were well matched. Second, the complication rates were virtually identical between the two procedures. We found no specific complications related to renal artery denervation. Third, we found that in fact, the patients who underwent renal artery denervation did have better blood pressure control over the course of follow-up. The primary endpoint of the study was the recurrence rate of atrial fibrillation at the end of the 12-month follow-up period. The freedom from atrial fibrillation rate was significantly higher in the group that underwent renal artery denervation and was approximately 71% and that was 43% better than the recurrence rate in the patients who underwent pulmonary vein isolation alone, the standard approach, at 56%. Well, the next steps will be as follows. We're gonna dig deeper into our data set. We're gonna look at which patients responded best in this procedure. Then we will design additional clinical trials. These clinical trials will probably focus on other patient groups with atrial fibrillation, including those perhaps with no hypertension whatsoever, because we believe that renal artery denervation can have an antiarrhythmic effect without necessarily having an antihypertensive effect. In addition, we're going to look at other cardiac patient populations that may potentially benefit from renal artery denervation and its antiarrhythmic effects, including patients with life-threatening ventricular tachyarrhythmias. The highlights from Heart Rhythm Society 2019 are many, of course. Of course, I am most interested in the fact that not only did our trial suggest that this form of therapy, which it can be categorized as neuromodulation, has had other uh, studies presented in the same category of treatment that have also shown benefit. So we believe that non-cardiac approaches to manipulating the autonomic nervous system, the nervous system that stimulates or doesn't stimulate the heart, can be a, an effective antiarrhythmic tool.